Y'all remember numbers 13 and 14? You remember numbers 13, 14. You know where I'm going, right? And I don't mean the numbers like 13 and 14. I'm talking about the Hebrew Bible, right? Numbers 13 and 14. So in Numbers 13 and 14, Moses and Aaron are with the Israelites in the desert at the very end of their journey, they think, right? They've been living on manna, which is a gift that they're grateful for. And then Moses, in his amazing managerial style that he has, decides to send out 12 princes or spies. I prefer to call them scouts. So if you will allow a laywoman without any training to call them scouts today, I appreciate it. We have consent on that, right? Okay. So the 12 scouts go out and they go to Canaan and they look at the land. They've been told by Moses, again, a great manager, go see what the land is like. Is there fruit? What does it look like? Is the land good? Can you have cattle on it? What are the people like? Are they strong? Or are they weak? Can we take them? And come back with your TPS reports. Gen Xers know what I'm talking about, right? Come back with those. And Moses hints that he only wants to hear good news. It's kind of fascinating. So the 12 scouts go out, they go to the land of Canaan. They're gone, 40 days or so, you know, biblical numbers. They come back and what, it, what happens? right? Of the 12 scouts, 10 come back saying, yeah, the land's pretty good. You know, here's a bunch of grapes. Isn't that awesome? We can make wine, right? However, the people are too strong. It's bad. This is not the promised land. We can't go there. This is not for us. And so what happens? the Israelites start like groaning around the campfires. They start moaning, this can't, no, but we thought this would be our promised land. We're tired of manna. We are tired of this. We want to get out of here. Let's just go back to Egypt. Egypt was so much better than where we are right now. And then what happens? So then Caleb and Joshua stand up all bravely and they offer a dissenting report. The land is good. I don't like the whole, we can take the people, it's fine, but it's there in the Bible. There's a lot in the Bible we don't like. You know, we can conquer the people. We have proof, we have milk and honey, which means it can grow crops and we can have livestock. This is the promised land. God is calling us to be here. And what do the Israelites do? They moan and they groan and they fret and they tear their clothes. And I don't, I mean, they don't even have robes. Why are they tearing them? Like you need to wear your, right? There's no like mall, shopping mall to buy a new robe. So what's happening here? Why are the Israelites whining and crying and fretting and not listening to the two reports from Caleb and Joshua. Because the Israelites have a mindset of scarcity and not abundance. Because of their disbelief and fretting, the Israelites, except for Caleb and Joshua, had to wait for another generation before they could see the promised land. And so my friends, let us not spin our wheels fretting only to lose a generation of Episcopalians by letting this opportunity pass us by. Let us not lose a generation of church leaders because we clung too dearly to our addiction to scarcity rather than the full embrace of God's abundance. Amen. 